Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Tucker shouts out to Jack after spotting him at the club. Jack gripes about being forced to visit him there. What keeps you here again? Isn't Glissade the work of your new life in Paris? Tucker points out that the internet is a really cool invention. Jack begs him to meet with his workers in person in France. Has it ever occurred to Tucker that I might relocate Glissade here? Go for it, Jack yells, wanting a front row ticket to his devastation. Tucker claims he gave him a call to discuss Ashley. She came over to me. Jack tells him that she is over her feelings for him. The two of you will not be performing a third act. Tucker concurs, yet he worries a great deal about her. Jack, she's falling apart. How dare you pass judgment on Ashley, growls Jack. Tucker restates his concerns, saying it all began with a false memory of what happened in Paris. I've never seen something like that behind her eyes. Something unfamiliar to me? She can be one thing at one moment and another else. After telling me via text that she doesn't want to talk to me, she'll change her mind and want to get back together an hour later. That worries me a lot. Jack wonders if that's accurate. How could he not have noticed, wonders Tucker? Are you truly that unaware? Ashley needs help now, and I told her as much, rages McCall. You're not allowed to tell her anything, Jack growls. That right is no longer yours. Tucker is informed by him that Ashley is over him. She only told me this morning. Tucker questions whether she told him she wanted to partner again before or after that. What do you think of her saying that she wants us to partner with each other again in everything? Jack thinks Ashley doesn't require interference from her big brother. In this instance, Tucker believes that she does. Since he is unable to step in, he hopes Jack will. Jack tells McCall to keep his distance from Ashley and to leave her to them. Claire warns Kyle at society that he might not come to appreciate her version of events. They joke around, and he says he wants to know more about you. How did a nice girl like you end up trying to poison her family? The woman chides. Claire becomes serious and tells him that her insane aunt has been in charge of her entire life. She was unaware that her aunt had abducted her or that she was disturbed. I had total faith in her. Jordan revealed to her that her parents had never shown her love or affection. Kyle finds it incredible to inflict such suffering on a youngster. Claire claims that it was done by a vengeful, cruel individual. She made sure she despised the Newmans as much as she did. To get payback was my only purpose in life. For something that never happened thinks Kyle. Claire bemoans the fact that she almost killed her family. Kyle believes she is not at fault. That's your aunt. Claire is grateful to the Newmans for giving her another opportunity to start over. You're right, that is quite a story, says Kyle with a smile. Claire assumes he still views her as a deranged felon. Upon their reunion, Victoria is overjoyed to learn that they have been getting to know one another and that Claire is forming friendships with people her own age. Victoria is informed by Cole that Victor is attempting to get in touch with her. He would like to talk to her and Claire alone. Although Kyle should definitely return to Harrison, he tells Claire that he is impressed with her ability to bounce back. He's just giving them some space, he's not running. Claire assumes Jordan escaped once more as Cole settles in. Victor yells into the phone at Newman, I want to hear no more excuses. You locate that woman. Nick is upset at Jordan's escape as he crushes the phone. Jordan is free to chase them again. Nikki adds as she enters, and it's all her fault. How did she find out before him? asks Victor. When security was unable to get through to Nikki, she clarifies that they called the ranch. She is happy that they informed her so she could be ready. Victor wonders why she would go there given the ranch's increased protection. Nikki longed to be among people and was bouncing out of her skin. Victor queries whether Larry accompanied her and whether she made any stops. Do you mean did I stop for a drink? inquires Nikki. 
she acknowledges her desperation for one. Victor detests the abuse Jordan has given Nikki. She'll manage somehow. It was good that she had seen Jack earlier. She texted him to ask him to meet her at a meeting of AA. I'm heading there right now. I know the GCD will find Jordan, Nick promises her. They will have to put an end to her permanently if she is foolish enough to pursue them once more. Nick tries to comfort his mother about saving Jordan's life, and Victor texts Larry to go with Nikki. She won't take her humanity either. She has had enough. When Sally gets to Newman later, she discovers Nick sitting in Victor's chair. Adam isn't there, he tells her. Sally was searching for both Victor and him. It's not a good time, according to Nick, to grab his dad's attention. Sally acknowledges this and adds she came to let him know Adam is leaving with Chelsea and Connor tonight. Nick claims that Adam informed him about the OCD. Sally says that they have decided to send the boy to an East Coast treatment facility. Adam is being torn apart by it. And Connor is also not too fond of the notion. She promised Adam she would inform them. Nick claims that Adam is fortunate to have her. Your assistance. Sally is also present to request their support for Adam. He is having a lot of trouble with this. Nick claims it's not a problem because he understands Adam's situation. He concludes that Adam ought to board the Newman jet with Chelsea. Thanking him, Sally inquires as to whether their relationship is truly improving. We're good, Nick grinned, says Sally, it's good to see. She says she should go look for Victor, but Nick tells her not to tell his dad that she is Connor's daughter. Sally queries her course of action. Nick begs her to give it to him. Nikki informs the group at her AA meeting about the most recent developments of the woman who force-fed her alcohol. This woman has infiltrated every aspect of my life, including here with our dear Seth. She stole an innocent child and burned down my daughter's house. She received word that the psychopath had escaped, but she still believed she would eventually be held accountable for her heinous deeds. God knows where she's out there. Again, she's dangling on a thread. May I have a drink? Yes, exactly. I want the entire bottle. Damn it. I want to booze myself unconscious to avoid experiencing this irrational fury. She goes on. I feel as though I'm perched atop a tree, staring down at a tsunami that is headed directly toward me. She is just able to hold onto a tiny thin branch. You are that. This particular program. My only chance to avoid stopping at a liquor store on the way home is to be completely honest with all of you here. As Nikki cries, why can no one stop her? Jack shows up. She is always being praised by everyone in her life for her moral rectitude and strength, but she despises that lady with all of her being. She prayed for the wrong thing, wanting the woman to rot in prison. I hope she passed away. Jack grasps her hand. Nikki thanks Jack for guiding her back at the ranch. Perhaps she would want to continue talking, Jack reasoned. It appears that was only the very beginning. Sighing, Nikki says, it's just too much. They talk about why she called 911, that there was no moral code in place, she was only trying to make Jordan's pain last as long as possible. Victor enters and assures Jack that he will handle everything from here. Jack cautions Victor in the hallway that although he believes the meeting was beneficial, it took a lot out of her. Nikki is joined by Victor, who asks her to be truthful. Are you finding these meetings too difficult? He believes Nikki is covering, despite her insistence that she feels better. Nikki is always battling her temptation to drink and is quite afraid. I'm concerned that it will worsen. Victor assures them they will move past it. In the interim, he has an idea. It will function in two ways. Victoria fears that Jordan's escape will completely append her mother at society. Claire is in shock that this is occurring once more. Victoria thinks that by going up against Jordan, they started this. Nick finds Adam at Crimson Lights, where he is attempting to make a travel reservation. Nick says he was updated by Sally. Take the jet, Adam. Thank you, sighs Adam. That is beneficial. 
That is really beneficial. Is he hanging in there? Nick wonders. Adam claims he's only making progress. According to Nick, no parent should have to deal with this kind of diagnosis, and no child should have to endure it. Adam claims that although Connor is upset with them, he is open to trying. The facility's arrangements were managed by Chelsea's. He fears she is being too harsh on herself. To tell the truth, I'm afraid she might lose it. Nick tells Adam not to worry about Chelsea's mental health and to stop pressuring her. Billy, he knows, is standing up for Chelsea. Adam mocks that he's never really there. Nick begs him to accept Billy's assistance. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.